You don't really know much about Halloween. Hello and welcome to another unboxing video. I am your host Joel. I'm one half of the Newly Deads and if you are asking yourself who are the Newly Deads, please go check out our website at thenewlydeads.com. We can find out all of our other content including the two blogs that we write, uh, our television show, our other YouTube content, as well as any events that we may be at. As we are artists, you can go and see us in person, see what we have to offer. Um, we do like to create and uh, you can also um, just get general information about us. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach us at contact at thenewlydeads.com. And so if you are familiar with this channel, uh, I don't know in what order these are going to be released, but uh, I went a little bit uh, left of center on the halfway to Black Friday sale, if I remember correctly. I, I can't keep all the sales straight. Anyway, it was a, or maybe it was a subscriber sale. I don't know. They, uh, they had their big week-long sale. Uh, at vinegar syndrome and they had a lot of good stuff and i just kind of went a little off the deep end so uh, i've tried to split these up into different segments this is the segment where we're going to talk about uh the box sets that i picked up because i had a day for uh box set contest and i pulled it right here um <laughs> so the first one we have here is one that i've kept my eye on for a while but i have not pulled the trigger on until this sale i'm gonna move it back a little bit uh is the televised terror box set volume one uh, as you can see here, you've got Elijah Wood and looking like he's in peril. Uh, this contains three films that were aired on television. Uh, the first one is Are You Alone in the House from 1978, uh, The Calendar Girl Mur Murders from 1984, and Child in the Night from 1990. Uh, the first one was directed by Walter Gurman, who did uh, some episodes of V, which is one of my favorite shows from my childhood. Uh, the second film is directed by William A. Graham, who did Blood Crime. Sounds interesting check that one out sounds like a giallo movie uh the third one was directed by mike robe or roby who did guts and glory the rise and fall of oliver north yeah um the first one stars one dennis quaid from great balls of fire which is an underrated musical movie about uh jerry Lee lewis um i'm a fan of jerry Lee lewis's music but not in his personal life the film is entertaining but uh can be a little bit uh sus in terms of kind of Anyway, you know if you know. Uh, the second film uh, stars Alan Thicke from uh, that Alan Thicke from Growing Pains, who sired uh, Robin Thicke, who was all about those uh, thin white lines or whatever it was. I remember the name of the song. And uh, like I said, here you got Elijah Wood, who is a horror fanatic, who uh, was in the Maniac remake, which was actually something worthwhile checking out if you've not checked it out because you're a huge fan of the original. Um, with Joe Spinell, I highly recommend checking out the remake. Uh, it's got the seal of approval from a lot of horror fans. Um, <clears throat> and he was in the, the recently shelved Toxic Avenger remake, which apparently uh, they can't find distribution for, so it's just kind of being put to the side, which means it may never see the light of day, which is sad. Um, but anyway, so the uh, Are You Alone in the House is about a teenage girl who is harassed by a stalker who torments her with threatening notes and phone calls. There's a, like, I went through a, a phase where I watched all the Kolchak the Night Stalkers, which is kind of the, the, the progenitor to the X-Files. And it's amazing how engaging and good those shows are. So if you are not familiar with uh, television movies, that's, I think, why this exists is because they're a lot better than they should be. And a lot of times they're directed by people that have done a lot of other big things. Um, the second one, Calendar Girl Murders, uh, is about a media mogul, Richard Trainer who is celebrating the success of his <clears throat> nude modeling business uh, and introducing the newest class of calendar models to the adoring public. The party is ruined when one of his models is, yep, you guessed it, murdered. <clears throat> so, Alan Thick, I don't know if you're the, the guy that's running the agency, but shame on you, sir. Go home to your family. Uh, and the last one, uh, Child in the Night, 
Uh, Joe Beth Williams, I'm sorry, a psychologist treats an eight-year-old boy who witnessed his father's murder, but the child blocks out details that could help the police. That's maybe why he looks upset here. Uh, so a little bit of trivia. Dennis Quaid had to turn down the role of Bob in Halloween due to already being committed to this movie. Um, he was dating and married the same year to PJ Souls, who had already been cast as Bob's girlfriend, Linda. I hate to say it, uh, Dennis, but that may have been a misstep. Now, Bob isn't the biggest character in the film, but Halloween is just kind of like a staple. So I don't know if that, I don't know if that would have changed the direction of the film at all, but that um, seems like an odd choice. Uh, Claudia Christian and Camilla Morris' debut is in The Calendar Girl Murders. And uh, Joe Beth Williams and Tom Skerritt are the psychologist team <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, Child in the Night. Uh, wait. <clears throat> Start over on that. So on the third one, uh, Joe Beth Williams and Tom Skerritt are the poltergeist team. Uh, Williams having appeared in the first two Poltergeist films and Scarrett in the third. So they're all in uh, Child in the Night. So um, on the back here, we've got some titles for each one of the films. Got the nice little, you know, slide it up here. Well, that's ominous. It says I'm watching you. And uh, please stand by, which uh, yeah. I won't make you wait. Then on the inside... We've got Are You Alone in the House? Nice little cover there, which it's interesting because, you know, these weren't theatrical releases yet. We have some semblance of a poster. Maybe it was in the TV guide on the inside. We essentially just have a test pattern. I don't know how many people really know test patterns at this point. I don't know what they... If you're watching Strictly Streaming. It sounds like a bad TV show. Um, then you've got... Uh, test patterns probably aren't a thing. Here we've got the Calendar Girl Murders. There's Mr. Tom Scarrett looking like he got hurt. Um, a lot of girls in slips. It's the exact same thing on, in, on the inside of all three of these. It's got the test pattern, and then the disc is very generic. Uh, it's it's all about the, the covers and the backs of these here. So, like I said, I held on the, off on this a long time. I, didn't, I wasn't 100% sold on it when I first heard about it. Uh, it's been on sale a couple times, and I, I still kind of kept shying away from it because it is TV movies, and I, I feel like those sometimes are can be a little lesser. But I, like I said, I finally pulled the trigger, and I, I think I'm going to be glad I did, but uh, we'll know here soon enough. So the, the next two things I got was uh, Forgotten Jelly Parts 4 and 5. I got 6 as part of um, the subscriber box, one of the subscriber boxes for this year. Um, and so I went ahead and decided to go backwards. I am not a Gialli guy. Like I, I've not really ever gotten into Giallo films. And uh, so this is kind of my attempt to do a deeper dive. And I know this isn't like the big ones, but I'm kind of going in through the back door, so to speak. Um, so Forgotten Gialli 4, there's the, the covers here. Um, if you're not familiar with Giallo films, there's a lot of great content out there that will walk you through it. A lot of good books, a lot of ways to find out. Um, <clears throat> so this contains uh, Arabella Black Angel from 1989, The Killer. She is uh, the Killer is still among us from 1986, and The Sister of Ursula from 1978. So you've got a little bit of a broad spectrum there. Uh, the first one was directed by Silvio Massi, who did Taxi Killer, which is one that is on my list of things to see. I didn't buy it. Uh, there was an opportunity to pick it up. It was just released recently on a, a, a Blu-ray. Um, I did not. The second one was directed by uh, Camilo Tete, who did uh, Cobra Mission 2. Of a good, of a good uh, Italian action film. Uh, and the third one was directed by Enzo Meloni, uh, who did uh, some Italian films that I just I'd never heard of. They were all in Italian, so uh, these are things I need to kind of dig into and, and learn more about. Uh, the first one stars Tini Can Cancino, who was in Nightmare in Venice, which I've heard of that one. If you're familiar with Italian films, you've probably heard of that one too. Uh, the second one is stars Luigi uh, Mezzanotte, who was in the Eurocops TV series, which sounds interesting. And the third one stars Anna Zeneman, who was in The Bloodstained Butterfly. Again, if you are familiar with Giallo films or Italian horror, you'll know that one. Uh, so the plot of... Arabella Black Angel 
is Arabella is an infomaniac. One day, her writer husband finds her with another man. She has a strange reaction uh, in which Arabella kills her lover. Hmm. Uh, and the killer is still among us. During a spree of violent killings, a young woman writing a thesis in cr criminology begins to suspect that her new boyfriend, who is a forensic psychologist, uh, or pathologist, excuse me, might be the serial killer. These all sound very jolly, if you ask me. And then finally, the sister of Ursula, uh, still mourning the passing of their father, two uh, Austrian sisters, Dagmar and Ursula, arrive at a luxurious Italian seaside hotel, and at the same time, a mysterious killer starts murdering promiscuous women in the area. Now, how does he know they're promiscuous? I don't like that. Uh, we'll see what happens. So just a little bit of fun little facts on these. Um, for the first film, uh, director Silvio Massi directed a number of films between 1985 and 94, including this one under the name Max Steel, which sounds like he's probably directing other stuff. You know what I mean? I think you... Um, the second film is loosely based on the story of the so-called Monster of Florence, a uh, serial killer active in Tuscany between the 70s and 80s. So kind of a loose tie in there. And the third one, uh, The Creature Sound, the teenage couple here is in the old castle, uh, is from the 1973 Serbo-Croatian horror film uh, Lepteris, Lep, Lepterica. Lepterica. That sounds all right. I've heard of that, I want to say. Um, it may just be because I, I remember writing up the notes. Um, got uh, blood-stained eyeballs there. Uh, but... It's interesting. I'm kind of curious about that one because why are they? Because giallos are, you know, they're not monster movies. They are movies about, uh, you know, black glove killers and uh, very unique ways of dying and lots and lots of very red blood and uh, kind of big murder set pieces. So I'm not sure. That's interesting. Uh, so let's see. This is Arabella Black Angel. I'll have to be careful. I, um, but there's no things that we can't show on the YouTubes. I don't want to, not that we're monetized in by any stretch, but I don't want to get uh, kicked off the channel, if you know what I mean. I I have, like I said, I, I have, um, these are the, the, the second and third sets I have for this. So, uh, but I have not dug into any of them yet. I, I've seen several Giallo movies, uh, like Suspiria, of course, is one that I think everybody's seen at least once. <clears throat> uh, Torso. Um, I don't know that Pieces qualifies, but Pieces is one of my favorite, uh, although I don't know if that's my piece. I don't think that. Let's edit that out. Edit that. Um, and finally we have here this. Oh, yep. Everything's covered. Just making sure. Um, these are all pretty basic, you know, as far as kind of what, uh, is on the interior. Yeah. I have to edit that out. I didn't catch it before it went to the screen. My fault. Um, so I'm hoping I'm not making a misstep here and not just going straight for the classics. But, um, you know, I, I, you've got to start somewhere, right? And why not? So the second one we got is uh, Forgotten Gialli Volume 5, <clears throat> which includes a white dress for uh, Mary Alley from 1972. Uh, Tropic of Cancer from 1972, and Nine Guests for a Crime from 1977. Uh, the first one was directed by Romano Scavolini, who directed Savage Hunt. Uh, the second was directed by Giampaolo Lomi, who did I, Baroni, and that's it. Uh, it was also directed by Ed Eduardo Malargia, who did a lot of the Django uh, sequels, spinoffs, and unofficial uh, films which <clears throat> um, he directed the second film here. It was, uh, they, they both directed it. Which, if you're not familiar with the Django films, uh, they're spaghetti westerns, and there was only two official sequels, if I remember correctly, and then there was a lot of other spinoffs and whatnot, so there unofficial ones that came out that it's just, it's, it's a whole franchise. It's crazy. Uh, and then the third one was directed by Ferdinando Baldi, who did War Bus, which sounds interesting. I think it's a war movie. Um... So for the first film, it stars Evelyn Stewart, a.k.a. Ida Galley, who was in The Psychic, and La Dolce Vita, which I saw La Dolce Vita in a film class. Fantastic film. Um, the second one stars Anita Stringberg, who was in The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, which sounds very familiar to me. 
And the third one has Arthur Kennedy, who was in Lawrence of Arabia. Yes, that Arthur Kennedy. Yep, there are some transplants that go both ways in terms of Italians come over here and England, English Americans go over there. So the plot of A White Dress for Mary Alley is that a woman who witnessed her father kill himself as a child invites several friends to her husband's secluded castle. Uh, unbeknownst to them, she has a sinister motive for the invitation. Uh, for Tropic of Cancer, not to be confused with the Arthur Miller story. Uh, while all vacationing in Haiti, a married couple meet an old doctor friend who resides there, Dr. Williams, sorry, my dog just barked, who invented a new drug formula, and there are a few unscrupulous parties interested in acquiring it by any means necessary. And uh, nine guests for a crime. Uh, while spending their annual vacation on a small Mediterranean island, nine bourgeoisie family members are stalked and killed by one uh, mysterious killer, which that sounds about as giallo as you get. Uh, I couldn't find any trivia out about the first film. The second film uh, was that I wrote that it was not based on the Henry Miller book of the same title. Not Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller was a playwright. Henry Miller was the author. Uh, and the third one, uh, J.B. Scotch is the favorite whiskey of Uberto's clan, as it is uh, very, f as it is of fashionable denizens of Gialli in general. So apparently, I, I misread my own wor wording there. Uh, apparently, J.B. Scotch is a big thing that's featured in Giallo films. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Lots to learn, kids. Lots to learn. Um, so here we've got little fun little things on the top. Let's take a look at what's inside. Now, I've opened all these, which I, I used to not do, but I decided you know people sometimes like to see the interior of the boxes. Um, so that's a bit more of the what you just saw there on the side. Let's double check here. <clears throat> No nudity, but we do have a foot, feet, foots, two foots, big foots. Um, I don't know where I'm going with that. I haven't eaten or had any caffeine yet today. Lovely cover here. For White Dress for Mary Alley, which was the first film I mentioned, but uh, the second one in the box here. Did them just in the order that uh, they were on the Vinegar Syndrome website. And the last one is Nine Guests for a Crime, which a little bit risque, but not uh, full on, gonna get me in trouble sort of thing. And on the inside, let's say here, we have, ooh, that's pretty gruesome. All right, well, let's put these all back in so they can go into their little hidey hole until I get a chance to get to them, which, the only sad part is, is that there's never enough hours in the day to get to all the things we want to do. So uh, you got to make time for the little things in life. And in my opinion, it's the little things in life that make that uh, that are the most important. That's the word I'm trying to say. So, all right, kids, there's another unboxing video for you. Hope you enjoyed yourself. And uh, just remember that tomorrow is not guaranteed. So don't forget to unbox your heart. See you next time. Should be done, you see. Between the real and the unreal, the dead might be looking at Halloween, the festival of Sauron. Happy Halloween.